Okay, let's go ahead and um, receive payments from our clients. Um, again, similar to what we did in February, this specific instance will go through undeposited funds because that's the way it is set up in QuickBooks. So what happens is as these checks arrive from our uh, clients, we put them in the drawer, right? And they're basically stored in in that drawer all right so again let's show the debits and credits before they get deposited so they're called undeposited funds customers receive payments all right let's get on it so first one is properties all right, the amount we receive six five three seven fifteen day three sixteen all right check number twelve there it is okay so what's happening right now well we know that previously that money was in accounts receivable so accounts receivable has to be reduced by that amount Accounts receivable is an asset, it's reduced when credited. What else is happening? Well, this money, this check, is going into our drawer before we deposit. And therefore, that undeposited funds, that drawer full of checks or cash, it's an asset. And assets go up when debited. There is debits and credits are in balance. This amount right here, this payment, right? Um, that would be, you know, credit to 11,000. And this amount right here, since it's associated with the check, that's a debit to undeposited funds of 12,000. So here it is, debits and credits are in balance. Let's continue. As we previously showed, all this really is, it's about converting those um, accounts receivables into undeposited funds. Right, here it is again. Debits and credits are in balance. Let's keep going. Okay, here's our debits and credits. Again, 1,200 is undeposited funds, 11,000, I mean, 12,000 is undeposited funds, 11,000 is accounts receivable, our accounts receivable is an asset. It is credited and therefore reduced, makes sense. We got that check, so it's no longer owed to us. However, it hasn't been deposited yet, so it goes into 12,000, which is undeposited funds. This is this amount right here, is um, credit to 11,000, and this amount right here is a debit to 12,000. This one is from GoPax. Okay. 
And then this is the one with the credit because we can remember original amount. Then we have our credit memo. And here it is 658 yeah, 21, 25. Again, remember why are we not doing the whole amount? Well, because we already reduced accounts receivable. If you go back by the amount of the credit memo. So we don't need to do the full amount. Right, so again, the amount of money we received, we received this check, right? And we hold it in our can hands. It is reducing, it is reducing our accounts receivable balance further by the remaining amount, right? So that's 11,000 account, it is being credited. And then um, our revenue, I mean, our undeposited uh, funds goes up because now we have that check in possession, check for $6,581.25. And so it is debited because um, undeposited funds is an asset goes up when debited. Okay, very much same thing. Again, these are. Uh, very much identical conversion, right? We take accounts receivable converted on undeposited funds. Practice makes it perfect, so let's keep going with it. Okay. Same thing. Debits and credits are in balance. Let's continue. Okay, let's adjust the date on this one. Debits and credits are in balance. Again, I'm just going to keep showing it in this window just so as you go along, you remember, and I know what debits and credits are for each interface because each interface that posts to General Ledger has debits and credits. There it is. Divisions and credits are in balance. Again, just reiterating, 6,045, right? It is a credit to 11,000, which is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable goes down because we received that money. They're no longer out to us. We received the check. However, we haven't deposited that check. So it goes into drawer place that we call undeposited funds and it is an asset that drawer that collection of undeposited checks or cash it is an asset and therefore to be to increase it we have to debit it and that's what we happens here and that amount right here 6045 is a debit to account 12,000. Debits and credits are in balance. Good to go. Okay. 
debit and credits are invalid. Yeah, no, this simulation is definitely much more complex in terms of uh, transactions and volume compared to food trucks. So those of you that really want to test their skills, you want to try out this simulation, can you handle it? And can you handle it without making mistakes, right? Debits and credits are in place. We know that, saving you. It definitely allows you quite a bit of practice. Good to go. There it is, debits and credits are again in balance. Can move forward and we know the debits and credits behind this interface that's the cool part right if you don't well this amount right here is a debit to twelve thousand and deposited funds goes up because it's an asset and this amount right here is a credit to account eleven thousand which is accounts receivable it goes down because it's an asset Okay, change the date on this a little bit. Okay, good to go. We'll just again reflect. By now you know it, but still I want to reflect to show that debits and credits we know them behind it. There it is. There's your debits and credits. They're in balance. Um, here it is. Okay. Same thing. Not much different. We're receiving the payments. However, we haven't deposited that yet. And therefore, we debit undeposited funds. We do not touch revenue. Yeah, I want to. I want to remind people. Well, we received the money. Do I recognize the revenue? Do I book sales? We did that when we issued the invoices. So I can go back to that video and see if we are impacting the revenue. Okay, six three seventy five. Good to go. Let's continue. And credits are inbound. Okay. All right. Forty nine on that. Good to go. Debits and credits are inbound. And again, in this case, our clients pay us in full and they pay in the same month. In some of the future simulations that we plan to do, we will show you what happens when you have partial payment, right? And it's pretty straightforward by now. You see, after you see debits and credits, 
you know how to treat it, but we want to help you understand it more thoroughly. Uh, when they carry forward uh, and you don't collect them the same month or forward months or if you give them discounts or write them off, we will cover all that in the future simulations. Right now we're starting with basics to show that, right? Although it's pretty complex basics. Anyway, let's keep going. Good to go. 25, so we knew. Alright, one more. From Offer Kim, we received payments for doing their taxes. That's a good day. Ta da! 50-53, there it is. 50 Okay, just want to solidify it again. We received the payment right here, right? It is reducing our accounts receivables because less money is owed to us. So, Accounts receivable is an asset, it is reduced when credited, here it is, we credit 11,000. What else is happening? Well, we got this check from our client and that check is right now sitting in a drawer in my desk. I haven't deposited it yet. So it's undeposited funds. Undeposited funds are assets, right? I have them in my possession, they're my assets. Assets go up when debited, therefore undeposited funds, 12,000, has to be debited by that amount. And that's what we're doing. So those, this is a debit. This is a debit right here to account 12,000. That's it. Save and close, right? We're done collecting money uh, from our client, right? And now we're going to take all that money and deposit it to the bank. So now we're going to convert from undeposited funds asset to our bank. So here it is, banking, bank deposits. See, they're all lined up here. They're all lined up here and we're gonna make those deposits. All right, first ones we have right here. What is 6,000, 57 and 50 makes sense. So let's, let's document what's going to happen here before we move forward. So it's going to go into our general account, which is 10,100. It will increase by 46,057 cents. I mean, $46,057.50, right? It's an asset, assets go up when debited. What else is happening? Well, we have this undeposited funds, right? that we will be reducing. So technically we could do this, that's correct. Or we can indicate the individuals once. So let me do that just for kicks and giggles. So, oh well, you get the idea, right? So each one of these, we can do it this way. So you see that I am taking those individual line items. All right, here it is. Debits and credits are in balance. This amount is the sum of all this. So each one of these selected items, it is a credit to undeposited funds to account 12,000. 12,000 is an asset. Assets go down when credited, right? We take that undeposited checks, take them to the bank. We no longer have them undeposited. So that has to be reduced. Our bank balance, on the other hand, will go up and it has to be increased through debit. Okay, let's continue. All right, so the deposit date, let's just adjust that. General deposit, we can put this number here. There it is, right? 4657, 4657, 46, some of this is also 4657.50. These are our credits to 12,000. This is our debit to 10,100. Saving you. Some more deposits we gotta make. 
Uh, Alright, so we have this one, this one, this one, this one. A seven one seventy five. Yep, that works. So we know our bank would go up. Let's see. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I can fix anything. Anyway, we'll just enter the sum. Right, so each one of these is a credit to account 12,000 undeposited funds because it reduces it. We just took those checks out. And what happens is it went, our bank account balance went up, so it has to be debited. So this whole total will be, oops, I forgot to enter a check here. I'll tell you. Uh, this amount right here, the total deposit will increase our bank account balance by $27,175 and therefore our bank account $10,100 our general bank account has to be debited all right let's change the date 19. Right. I mean we could also post the transaction and you can see that, you know, the undeposited funds is right here, our bank is here. So each one of these is a credit to 12,000. And then this total is a debit to this. Makes sense. All right, we have one more, one more. These are the leftovers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we can do on this one. So let's do on this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, and credits in place we should be good to go five three four five so let's break it down and again you can see it on the interface So this is what you see here is what you see on the interface and, and again the accounts are here each one of this is a credit to 12,000 and then the sum of them the offsetting debit is an increase to our bank account so undeposited funds goes down we're depleting that stack of checks and then we're increasing our bank account okay so that concludes uh, posting deposits, All right? And we have money in our bank account. So now we need to move forward and book other transactions for the month of March.